And now it's time to talk about the pink-headed stepchild of the rosé world. Rosé bubbles, or rosé sparkling. Rosé sparkling only makes up about 10% of champagne's production, but it's much more prevalent around the world. The problem that rosé bubbles has is sometimes it has too much tannin. Sometimes the dosage can be too sweet, and sometimes it can be too fruity. When you're trying to tame those tannins, you're trying to maybe add a little bit of sweetness. Maybe you're trying to keep that fruitiness so that those tannins don't show through. Either way, it makes it a real tough problem for those who like to pair their wines with food. And so, they're just great to drink. Let's be honest, rosé bubbles are the bomb. I have two to show you. Let's get to them. I am a big fan of still rosé, but I'm also a huge fan of bubbles. Today, these two, these were my top two rosé bubbles that uh, I picked out from a plethora I tasted. This one is the Trius Brut Rosé. If you've had Trius sparkling wines before, you know Trius is known for making bubbles. Good value, but also great bubbles. Uh, the Brut is probably on the top of many people's lists. And well, the Trius Brut Rosé should also be there. It's full of strawberry, raspberry, lemon, lime. This is one of those wines that is very, shall we say, the one you want on the table. And then we have your fun frolic. We have the Malavoir Bizou Rosé. It means kiss, and it's kissed with raspberry and citrus. It's fruity, it's fresh. This is the one I want to sit with on the patio, in the backyard. Just sip after sip, it's a pure joy. With food, without food. Whichever one, they're both brilliant. And that's a look at some of the best rosés that I tasted in 2023. You can check out the rosé report at michaelpincuswinereview.com. And hey, if you're looking for rosé, I'm the guy you should go to. And why? The last name is Pincus. It's kind of built right in. <laughs>